Norbert, over to you. Thanks, James. So I'm Stephen. This is Norbert. And as uh, as you know, because you decided to come along to this session, it is going to be a work session. But forgive us, we are going to talk at you for a bit just at the start to hi, no problem. Come on in um, just to uh, set the scene and describe a bit more what we what we have been doing. I've just remembered I need to switch this from mute to on. There we are. So should we have some online participants? They should be able to hear us. Okay. Um, it's a bit of a cliche, isn't it? We, we certainly live in uncertain times. Uh, who'd have thought it going back, you know, 24 months, that all the things that have happened, geopolitical changes, climate changes, impact, um, pandemics, uh, financial crises, and that's just the big stuff. And then there's what's going on in our own institutions um changing landscape it's just a, a, a tremendous amount going on and we thought uh, at the center for online and distance education where we both work at the university of london that it would be useful for all of us to try and get a sense of where we're going and what can we do about it as as individuals and as institutions so this session is to some extent about helping uh, helping you to scope out your personal agency You're just how, how much agency how much control have you got over the future and, and what is it you want to do about it um, and that of course begs the question well what is the future going to hold for us um, and given that we live in very uncertain times that's a really difficult question to answer and spoiler alert uh, we haven't got the answer, but we have some ideas. Um, and so the practical side of this is about developing a strategy to help deal with the changes that are coming down the line, whatever they may be. And, and you may want to think about those as individuals, or, or if you're here as, uh, if you've got colleagues from, uh, from your own institution, you might want to work with them as a group, or you might want to work in a mixed group. We'll, we'll look at that when we get to the, the actual practical bit. So quick summary there up there, what uh, we're going to be doing. We're going to explain the context. We're going to talk about the methods we've used. Um, we did a big literature review, so we'll summarize that. Um, introduce some tools that we have used and some that we are using now in this next and final phase. And as part of this, introduce four scenarios. and. Um, We'll, we'll actually give you those. The methodology is, as I said, we've had a literature review and uh, we've had a number of workshops where we've asked people to brainstorm what they think are the big issues that we're facing now and that we're going to be facing in the, the not too distant future. Um, and when we've, we've shared the results of those and run further work, workshops and out of that identified a range of drivers and there's a there's a summary on the right hand of the screen there. So scientific and oh, sorry, social, technical, environmental. Um, I can't remember them now. Uh, economic and political, yeah, drivers drawn out of the various bits of literature that we pulled together, and um, people have been asked to rank those in terms of which they think are going to have the most impact, which are the most important, and. Out of that, we developed some scenarios of possible and perhaps likely futures. And that's what we're going to be working with. So you can see we've already done a lot of work here. Uh, and we've got to the really important bit, which is, OK, if that's how it's going to be, what are we going to do about it? What, what can we do in terms of developing strategies to, to cope with all of this? So that's a quick outline of where we've got to and where we're going. And I'm going to hand over to Norbert now to talk about the literature review while I hand out the scenarios. Thank you very much. Um, I, clearly, as you can imagine, there is an absolute wealth uh, of literature. Uh, and uh, in particular, if you've uh, looked at the uh, journals um, as well as uh, other uh, the literature coming from uh, proprietary sources, uh, from uh, technology, tech companies and so forth. There's a big hype uh, about uh, 
new technologies. Um, doing some work uh, with uh, Keith Turvey at Brighton at the moment, um, and we're looking at uh, what's being published about AI and learner analytics alone in journals. And it's next to impossible to try and really capture uh, the full wealth. The interesting thing is, of course, that um, or that there, there's no really significant findings coming through yet. Uh, there's a lot of hype. There's loads of words. Uh, but it's not really clear yet where that's uh, going to go. We have obviously got a literature review for you to read. And uh, at the end of this presentation, we got a link. Uh, you can download it and uh, you can have a look at it. Um, but here's just a very, very uh, quick uh, set of bullets that give you an idea what we looked at. So yes, we did look at new technologies and what they bring. We tried wherever possible. Uh, to uh, have a particular focus uh, on online and distance learning uh, in, in the literature uh, we uh, looked at. Um, we uh, recognized that um, the, the, the potential and the affordances uh, of uh, technology are needed to be looked at specifically vis-a-vis -vis, uh, pedagogical uh, considerations as well as uh, the, the, the student experience, um, learner practices, and their acceptance uh, of the technology. Um, we all, and you can just see that that is is, is a massive field, and uh, it's quite challenging uh, to try and uh, skim uh, those um, sufficiently. Um, what we also looked at. Uh, was uh, higher education Next sector trends. Course. We can see that uh, higher education is in transformation, uh, is under siege, uh, huge pressure uh, from uh, political uh, quarters, uh, huge financial pressures, huge pressures uh, in terms of uh, digital uh, transformation, um, but also a very, very strong, uh, strong a sense of uncertainty about uh, what higher education is actually for um, and um, what the role of universities, the institutions as we know them at the moment, uh, is going uh, to be uh, in the future, uh, given in particular uh, what is emerging around uh, notions of platformization and the extent to which commercial uh, providers are starting to infiltrate uh, the uh, ways in which uh, universities operate. And the point about agency that uh, Stephen mentioned earlier on, um, I feel personally very strongly because what I can observe from my perspective is very often a rather unquestioning um, adaptation and adoption uh, of um, commercial um, software uh, solutions without necessarily uh, sufficient uh, consideration uh, of the last point on this list, uh, ethics. Uh, we continued to be concerned about digital inequalities and what the literature had to say about that. Uh, as I mentioned, wider learning industry trends and, of course, some of the really interesting and, in my view, very important work that's coming out uh, from people like Neil Selwyn around uh, sustainability and the extent to which, uh, given what Stephen said about um, climate change and uh, the challenges the planet uh, is facing, uh, that technology plays there. So uh, don't expect a massively in-depth uh, coverage, but uh, we tried to look at breadth uh, to really understand uh, what the, the drivers uh, were. Um, and if you were to look at the next uh, slide, uh, you could see some of the main trends, many of which I'm sure um, are fairly familiar uh, to you. I think one of the things we you know continue to see and, and find a challenge is the perpetual obsolescence uh, of uh, technology uh, and the really uh, rapid uh, and increasingly rapid pace of change and being able to keep up uh, with that uh, is, is, is really important, both in terms of institutionally and what are the best long-term strategies, given that there's so much churn and change, but also as a, from a learner perspective, uh, where uh, to 
uh, put one's uh, money and uh, on what technologies uh, to bet in that sense. And I think we found that uh, uh, flexibility was an important theme, uh, flexibility of choice and the attendant uh, agility uh, of, of adoption, but also at the same time, uh, the theme of uh, resilience in terms of learning design and infrastructure, as well as the individual level, learner resilience and being able to cope with all this plethora uh, of uh, opportunities there. Um, and um, I think, um, we all recognize uh, that clearly uh, AI uh, is going to play a very important role. I'm not going to talk about it here in terms of the literature review because you will find it comes through the scenarios uh, quite strongly. I think that's all Stephen wants to say about the literature review, unless you think we want to add something. No, no thanks, Norbert. So um, we've saved you an awful lot of work by by carrying out this literature review, and as and as I said, we we then. Um, out of this, try to pull out what uh, the main drivers might be. And we went through a number of iterations. And as you can see from this slide, um, inevitably there was some variation um, and uh, there were some outstanding, if you like, first choices, what, what people thought were really going to um, be affecting us in, in the not too distant future, or indeed already are. Uh, it's, it's interesting, AI came up again and again, just as it did this morning, um, with people saying, oh, AI is going to be a really big thing, and other people saying, oh, no, not more AI, uh, because we just don't know, um, but it's there, just quite how it's going to affect us, we don't know yet, but it's 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 definitely going to be part of the mix, and it's one that came out very strongly indeed. So you can see we looked looked at what the literature was was saying in terms of social, technical, um, economic, environmental and political change and uh, asked the participants in the workshops to vote for those. And you can see from the, the highest voted left hand column there, these are the things that, that came out really strongly. Um, that then gave us a choice because we couldn't work with all of these. And so um, what we decided to do was to focus down on two main areas. One was AI and one was a, a grouping of, of drivers to do with geopolitics. So it, 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 it pulls in things like, well, if there's climate change, that's going to affect food supply and water supplies, and that's going to affect migration. And then that's going to affect politics um, because you start getting wars or you start people borrowing other countries' resources or having special operations and things like that. So we, we boiled it down to um, these two sets of drivers, AI, which is going to be big somehow, the, the participants collectively felt, and geopolitics of one sort or another. And then we set up this matrix, and across the top, it's these are scenarios, summaries of scenarios, which take a positive view of AI. AI is going to be a good thing. That's a relief. Um, and down the left-hand side, geopolitics are going to be a negative thing, or if you like, down the right-hand side, they're going to be positive. So you end up with four quadrants, and in the top right-hand corner, as you can see, we've got a best case. The geo geopolitical situation is going to settle down. Uh, it's all going to be very positive. AI is going to have a very positive impact, and so life is going to be good. Uh, and in the bottom left-hand quadrant, it's the absolute opposite. Uh, the geopolitical context is going to get very messy indeed, and AI is not going to be a very happy uh, partner for online and distance education. And we've got we've got variations, obviously, in between. You've got a much more detailed description of these scenarios on paper in front of you, and we'll look at these in more detail in in a few minutes anyway. But that was just to give you an overview of where we're going with this. Okay. The big question, of course, is if if one or some combination of these four scenarios is going to be the future, or similar to the future, something like the future, what do we do about it? The, all the tools we've used so far have been drawn from um, the Futures Toolkit developed by the UK government as part of their Foresight Action Programme. So the, the tools specifically developed to uh, analyse and, and think about and plan futures. 
And this is the next step. This is looking at, so where do we go to from here? You can see there was a listed there, and there are some time estimates for how much time you need to do them. Uh, we're going to be looking a bit at backcasting, and no, we haven't got four and a half to five hours. We're going to do backcasting light. Um, backcasting basically just means, okay, let's look at what we've got, look at where we want to get to, how do we bridge the gap between what we've got and where we want to go. So that's what we're going to be doing. And Norbert's going to talk to us about an example. So I, I think it's um, coming back again to the point uh, that uh, Stephen made about uh, agency. It's obviously very easy uh, to become fatalistic in the context of uh, the sheer um, significant size uh, scale um, of um, the transformations that are happening, uh, the extent to which we tend to have a fairly, fairly limited uh, leverage uh, over the external drivers uh, that are impacting us. And uh, one of the things I think, and I think we as a group felt, was really, really important to avoid uh, is as a result to really um, forego uh, our own sense of uh, professional agency and just hand over uh, to uh, ed tech companies uh, to find uh, solutions uh, for us and uh, to uh, design in uh, all sorts of uh, unfair commercial advantages to them in the tools uh, and the services and the systems uh, they uh, provide. Uh, so um, I think um, it is uh, really, really important uh, in, in terms of uh, the, the strategic thinking, not just uh, to think about uh, institutional level strategy. Not very many of us have the uh, opportunity uh, to really uh, impact that, but to understand uh, that uh, strategy uh, is a highly stratified uh, a process and that wherever we are sitting, and I only know some of you here in terms of your roles, we do have a significant opportunity uh, in um, impacting uh, change and ensuring that the change that does happen uh, goes in the direction that we as professional would want to see. And uh, the an, an, an example from my own institution that I think uh, helps to illustrate that very briefly uh, is uh, the sort of uh, multi-layered uh, mitigation approach we adopted uh, to um, the uh, pandemic uh, a few years ago. Um, what um, I think uh, we uh, did well and what worked well uh, was uh, the fact that we managed to find an overarching conceptual uh, frame that allowed us to really align all the responses across academic, pedagogic, technical, um, financial, and so forth, uh, in a really uh, coherent way, uh, um, by identifying um, a number of uh, key principles uh, that everybody in the institution uh, shared and, and managed uh, to understand so we could all uh, really uh, operate effectively and contribute to strategy um, at our respective uh, levels. And for us, uh, it was this whole notion uh, that learning was a social activity, despite the fact that uh, students were uh, dislocated uh, from us uh, physically. And what can we do uh, to ensure uh, the connect connectivity uh, of uh, learning and, and of learners? How can we build a strong sense of community? Um, how can we achieve positive student experiences uh, by enabling strong structures? Um, and so we identified um, various different layers uh, at which uh, we needed to operate. And I think it's really important that, yes, technology was an important layer and decisions about which technologies to use and how. 
uh, was important, but it was equally important uh, to recognize that uh, this would only work if it's based on partnership-based working, both in terms of partnership with students, partnership with colleagues, but also partnership with uh, digital uh, technology partners, uh, and uh, that it was really important uh, to achieve uh, staff engagement uh, through um, appropriate uh, staff development and that we ensured we had the necessary investment, not just in the digital infrastructure, uh, but also uh, in people and in resources around this uh, notion uh, of uh, connected learning. And obviously, that you know the time has moved on and other priorities uh, have emerged and connected learning may no longer be the right conceptual frame but uh, what i'm uh, hoping uh, this in brief example uh, might help uh, to serve us uh, is a, a way of uh, thinking about your engagement now uh, with uh, the scenarios uh, that uh, we want you to have a look at, and Steve is going to explain how that's going to work uh, in a moment, but to think about your own personal agency uh, through your professional roles, through the networks that you're part of, through the influence that you can bring to bear in relation to uh, our partners, um, and uh, to achieve uh, a, a beneficial uh, sort of uh, a positive uh, future. You may have all sorts of other examples of how this operated at, at your institutions, but I think it's this uh, stratification of levels uh, that's really important. So uh, we don't, uh, as a sector, uh, as um, a group of very influential people uh, responsible for uh, the education of the next generation uh, sell out to commercial interest uh, and uh, always a uh, question uh, why we are changing uh, and how we can use uh, technology most uh, effectively. Stephen, do you want to set up the yep. task? Thank you. So you've got a choice now. We weren't sure how many people we were going to get and whether we'd have to force you to join groups and be chummy or whether you could relax and work on your own. So it really is up to you. As I said at the beginning, if you're here with institutional colleagues, you might want to form an institutional group. You might want to form a group around uh, one of these scenarios, uh, or you might wish to be standoffish and work entirely on your own. It's it's up to you, okay? But the idea is that um, how it, whichever way you, you do it, you select a scenario, and then you use a, a, a simplified version of this backcasting technique to look at um, feasible and desirable interventions that could be made. Uh, uh, as Norbert suggested, we're, we're looking at your agency in, in your roles at present. Looking around the room, I don't think I'm in the presence of any vice chancellors. Mm. So you don't have the levers to pull to make it happen. But you do have influence and you do have networks, you have contacts. So we're going to be thinking a bit about that. So this next stage draws uh, on the the, uh, the Futures Foresight tool, backcasting. Um, it also draws a bit on some of uh, Peter Checklin's ideas about soft systems methodology developed in the last millennium. God, it's so long ago now. Uh, but it's still good stuff because it focuses on what's feasible and what's desirable. And it also draws a bit on the work we did the, with the GIST curriculum design and development program, where we're looking at, so if you do want to bring about significant change in an institution and you don't have those levers, how do you do it? And the answer is you network with key stakeholders. So we're going to look at a bit at that. So for each, having looked at, at the scenario um, that you think is most close to where your institution's going, and identified feasible and desirable interventions, things that could be done, not solutions, just changes, sometimes quite small changes that could be made. For each of those, you need to identify, so who are the key stakeholders here? Who are the people who have got the levers? Who do I need to get on board? Um, sometimes they're not obvious. They're not, they're not, they're not the ones with the, the fancy titles. Sometimes it's the students. Um, who are the key stakeholders? What do you need from them? 
to make this intervention work, to make it happen. And what are they going to get out of it? Because they're not likely to do it unless they can see what's in it for them. So that's the method. You've got a worksheet, it looks like that. List the interventions, think about the stakeholders, think about the contribution you want from them and what's in it for them. What are the benefits to them? How are you going to persuade them to get on board? Okay. You've got the scenarios in great detail there. Um, that there's a summary there, which I'll leave up on the screen for uh, people who are joining us online so they can see that. Um, now it's up to you. We've, we've managed to keep it to just under half an hour of talking at you. Apologies for that, but we felt we needed to go through that bit. But now it's your turn to get stuck in. So you need to choose a scenario, choose who you're working with and start thinking about, so what would I need to change here? And I think the other thing to bear in mind is, of course, we did develop the scenarios through workshops with all sorts of uh, professionals from as wide a range as possible as we give a, a, a wider range of institutions and contexts as we could manage, uh, but they're by no means definitive or final or ideal. So if you have any views on the scenarios themselves and want to offer some critique on them in some way uh, based on your experience, I think we'd be very interested uh, in that as well, Steve. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So any questions? Apart from, can we go and sit outside in the sun? <laughs> no. Okay. Right. It's up to you. And we'll, we'll float about, do that bit. Yes. You'd like to go back? That one? <laughs> yeah. So, is that okay? Oh, sure. Oh, I'll just join one of these tables now. We may want to put the scenarios on again. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Can I put the scenarios back up now? Is that right? Thank you. Can I turn you with? You've got a couple of copies at least here on the table. But we're all doing the same one. No, that two batches was going to come out here. Well, this is there, there is another thing. Is there another one? One and one. We need a three. Yeah, we need another three. You've got how many threes then? One, three. One, three. Yeah, so yeah. Well, it's a bit share this one. Work okay. with that. Yeah, so you've got two. Even if it isn't, it's close to your, to your. And I'm just uh, see in that sort of context what type of interventions might we be thinking about? Yes. Um, And so one of the things this would, for example, mean the entire premise upon which they function up seems to work at the moment, yeah. namely Free. Free. UK at huge you know, cost to the environment, cost to them more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So if my own institution, for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have the same. 
Yeah. 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 How optimistic yeah. are you feeling? Oh, very. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fine. That makes it very clear. Yeah. But but for, 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 for my own institution, for yeah. example, fifty percent international students, um, and um, that yeah. obviously yeah. is not because we you don't want to educate UK uh, students. Yeah. But because the funding that we get for you makes some aspects of it better. There's money but for any of you familiar with this. So and it, that, that, that's how it works. Yeah, yeah. On the opposite. And if you march in with a solution, everybody will go. No, we didn't invent that, so we're not going to do it anyway. Yeah. 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 And then, it, yeah. And if you don't have a geopolitical context in which the UK government, you know, tries to isolate itself from everyone and everything that's completely prohibited from visa regimes in place and all that. You know, it becomes very volatile. Get them a knighthood, I mean, whatever. <laughs> yes, dependence, okay, so yeah, so that's, that's how it can We've students from certain yeah. countries <laughs> yeah, uh, now and of a certain age range who would uh, need to bring their families. See, this, so, yeah. this project could have been so that's the answer to his dream. <laughs> and then I think where you would uh, be now. In, 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 <laughs> Good move. It's only that has a huge kind of impact on, on education. Mm -hmm. We must buy everybody. Yeah. 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 But 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 there is this prepare for that possible event throughout the so it's not really whether or not there's anything good about AI. There's something good about everything. Um, it's just sort of like in the worst case, the significant uh, growth in the percentage and have a negative that uh, aspires to think more broadly. What the percent or eight percent? It worked yeah, fine, but it, these these sorts of um, so that's that's why I thought the worst at least probably a good one. Really hard. But again, there's, also, there's also the thing that you sign to online as a need of instruction. Quality. But I think there's almost like a negative one. But, but really, they're bad. They are. I'm just thinking about videos. Sorry, yeah. Um, well, do you want to pick contents? the whole plan assessment uh, is still in its relative infancy. Ludicrous. There will be a time that it comes around where it suddenly becomes a useful tool. Um, I think that that's, I mean, I've, I think even I've seen it now with, I don't know if you've seen Teacher Matic, um, which is a tool that's on, out there, an AI tool. And what it's doing is it's helping people write prompts to yeah. provide, and that's, that's to be honest, one of the real skills today. But I do think that we've got to do that. I agree. So enough for that's a chance to move and actually do this, you know. Because everyone said that peer to peer, net, peer, -to -peer networks is going to destroy television and uh, cinema. Um, no. Anyway, it still takes so much effort. Yeah. TV, you just the switch. The important thing is yeah. choose a scenario and do some work on it to get a feel for the method. No, no, not at all. And if you can't agree, then split. Yeah. yeah. Yes, let's work towards yeah. disaster. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah. Where's Mr. Putin's phone number here? Yes. <laughs> Obviously, in the next 25 minutes or less, you're not going to come up with a coherent, detailed plan for your institution. But to give you a feel. Ah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> I just scan in, then the person detects, and I'll check if it's still a problem. Oh, what if, uh, I must, I must have a look. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's the kind of thing we expect it to be to say, isn't it? Let's face it. Regulation is very much ethical AI development, yeah. but there's some better things. I mean, diversification of energy yeah. sources. Um, you know, okay, so it's thinking globally. It, yeah, it's by like giving it your text from last time to learn. Right. Counting this information, international collaboration. You have to fully online. People have interested now, mm -hmm. now is if mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, pick a pick a scenario it doesn't matter so if you want to take our fine what's going to happen what's your institution going to do about it you're not the vice chancellor but maybe in your there's something that would help to that presumably the answer Yeah. around technology uh, digital transformation because there's a massive push on digitalization that really stresses consumers and to compare their everyday life habits uh, with uh, what well, university and yeah like all that time of doing things that actually save resources and how and stuff like that we don't have to you know actually you know and to post in the earth and being kind of thinking, well, I'm saving all that travel. Oh, yeah, so right, yeah, but obviously it's perceived as uh, raising the system, the power there, the energy consumption. Yes, yeah. But then, how do you translate that to sound and cure? It's pretty difficult. And even if you're in a new system, you're using the remote. There's not that sense of, you know, you have to pay you 10,000 euros to get back to the journey. It's still in a position uh, any more than i am any of us to do anything mm -hmm. about that huge power consumption of the service yeah, yeah. server farms you can't, yeah, there, yeah. there's no feasible yeah. desirable yeah. change that we could come up with that, that was we could have um, i used to work at the business school and they really spoke on being um like so, um, yeah. something that's close to it in brussels and you know all the motor well consumption You don't have to clear the chat. Burn the entire energy consumption so of the country. Um, the and but to be part of so be part of the problem in that way, we should instead be collaborating with the world to do more scale AI systems. Are not able to trace AI usage yeah. or in the flight. So we don't have any tools. In English, no, no, no. thank you. It feels a bit, but I'm part of the task force that's now looking in. Personally, I find this a bit overrated. We've been using AI spell checkers, yeah, yeah. It's not as generative, it's more. Yeah, it's, it's it's a concern, but it's not a major concern. It seems so if you go more down the digital route, then it's going to be a choice. So our, part of the reason we've gone back to the paper is because training all our students to use it all the time. But we need someone like Jessica to be in the back legacy by developing and they provide a service for okay. uh, some of our networks and some of our team. Like online exams or recommendation mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. A shared service that, and then that they could even because and then books. Books. you know another university right how are you doing <laughs> what scenario is there <laughs> oh, we went for 
and uh, absorbing the openness of it at the moment. But there are positive aspects as well. So, so what could you do about inequality at, at a local level? You're not, you're not the government, but in your institution, what could your institution do? Hmm. What sort of inequality are we talking about here? Yeah. So could you make could you make courses freely available? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's so that sounds like it's a door that's already opening. So that makes it sound to me like it's desirable and it's feasible because people are already talking about it so there's there's nothing grand or magic about this process it's it's very often it will be picking on things that other people are already thinking about but trying to pull it all together and, and importantly thinking about so who do we need to get on board here who are the stakeholders who would you need to convince to i don't know produce a bunch of MOOCs that maybe could be uh, accredited by some industry group. So we're defining the scenarios, but have we actually defined where we want to move things? What are we trying to revert backwards in some way? Are we trying to move to a more desirable end point? Good questions. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, the scenarios describe what is perhaps likely to happen. But what do you want? Yeah, how how do you want if you think this is the scenario your institution is likely to find itself in, how do you want to change it so it doesn't end up like that? So is our aim to, to preserve to, to, are we are we thinking about this from a purely institutional point of view or are we thinking about our impact on wider society? What do we I think about it in terms of what you, you what you actually have agency over. Keep it grounded. This place as the so Warwick. You have a central place. You have a geographic. You have a understanding of community. You've got understanding of how the place itself impacts with the cities around it. Yeah. So of, of those things, where would you think the university can actually make? So there are a lot of there are a lot of things here that you probably can't make as an institute an impact. But universities are strong influencers in the communities in which they're embedded. So there must probably be some of the things that Warwick could do in order to alleviate some of the hardships that are described here. I think um, Warwick is quite like a, an eco place, like they had sort of focus on the um, like environmental impact of um, I don't know, like new buildings and stuff and um like around comforts um ensuring that like this I don't know like that sort of projects and stuff you know it's not anything involved in the project today but yeah just how we basically manage with the uh, no no current reference the current situation in the UK at all but <laughs> building stay for a while and there's a long term there's a long term impact of them having been built if we're looking at the yeah. we're working on the assumption 
stop this from happening here. You won't change uh, global climate, but you may change biodiversity in and around the university in a positive way. So about the inputs you have to your university, I think quite a next week, we train them, um, leaders in education coming over, and then um, we're providing resources and support for them, because so their transformational project that they're doing in Ukraine with the education system yeah. is going to be huge, and we've got a lot to learn from them, and they're coming to learn from us, and we're there to learn. And over 10 years, this may yeah. progress let's say the war goes on for another three yeah. years and then you're basically building towards the aftermath yeah so if we take that idea and bolt it onto the scenario which um suggests that in the future ai is going to be generating courseware yeah yeah which on the one hand that doesn't sound too good for us i thought oh, i thought that was my job mm -hmm. it's gone um but can can you take advantage of that to do these new things? Because it, it must be soaking up a lot of resources to be working with the Ukrainians. Yeah, I think that's one of the benefits of the AI, the luxury of time that it gives mm. back. But then providing people hang on to their jobs. And that's that's the concern within scenario three. But if you can turn that around and say we're actually going to take advantage of this. And there's a risk of disconnect somehow. So there's a lot in here about uh, AI generated case studies, which feels like the opposite of what might be required if you want to invest in your local local community and um, environment around you. So it's there's this thing in you know like, that do you know about that uh, there's an engineer that's heading so University, University of Arizona and yeah. Sydney and I can't remember business of Kings maybe. Yeah. And they're yeah. part of the British family and they're basically yeah. they are based yeah. on a site in Canada yeah. and they're yeah. regenerating yeah. the Canada Water site. Yeah. And the university, the students are part of that process. So yeah. British land are getting all this um when they graduate staff really know wow. the project already when they arrive and is there something talk, talk, talk about authentic assessments yeah. 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 but is there something that is definitely well that, you, you can do that here um you could regenerate uh well this is already a pretty, pretty good place but the university could have a strategy for example to i don't know Orders which have, a, have a, an impact on the uh, uh, lands on the people. Coventry could around. certainly benefit from that. Coventry could, could benefit from that. Uh, you could try to roll that. So the university could take an active role in starting to become a player in local redevelopment. I mean, it probably is already that by the virtue of its being there and it being an ethically, hopefully ethically acting entity on the whole. So I but it and could basically change that. And, and through that, it could develop research programs. And now that Horizon is back on, thank God. Um, scenario planning. The EU is going to put a lot of money into that. Yes, and you could you could use artificial intelligence. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I think that's a really interesting line of thought. And the next step then would be, so who at Warwick would you need to get on board with this? It sounds like some of it's already happening, but who do you need to get together? What, what would you need them to do? What would you need from them to make specifically this idea work? And what's in it for them? Uh, and maybe it is research profile and Billions of euros flooding back into the country, and so on. And part of that, we've got the group apprenticeships, so there's industry links, and then students are ready to design process. Moving together and crossing to be, you know, yeah. alternative yeah. providers of artificial intelligence or whatever. 
And then, uh, so thing on turn of energy sources like a game of sources. <laughs> We've yeah. got 10 minutes okay. to, to solve the problems of the world. Yeah. We've solved, we've solved, we've mostly solved them now. Excellent. Right. Just turn off the electricity. We've got 10 minutes left to run. How are you doing? Good conversation about different, well, that's good. differences in countries. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Do we bring it together to a plenary or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But um, give you a few more minutes. But I think exactly the phenomenon of the produce is really um, brings with it all the sequential way of technology as a medium to instruct delivery. So, do you think then with AI, so on the topic of wishful thinking, do you think that people are feeling they don't really want to spend four years getting knowledge? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, very to do it you have a written assignment for the yeah, well, not so much you know, to us, it's about yeah. 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 within the institution that we can make assessment in such a way that they still test what it's good. And internship for three weeks or four weeks. And then we go to that internship and say, how did you have it? So you can't check whether it's an actual. But even you can get an AI. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can yeah. reflect and you know, tell it to reflect on their placement. Right. Yeah, I, I think with these very sort of pre orientated, the, the challenge is always keeping abreast, isn't it? Because knowledge evolves very rapidly. Um, and it's in the case that in a working life, you, you, you almost ditch most of what you learned at university and, and over the process of years, develop and acquire new knowledge. So if, if that's how it really is a lot of the time anyway, then how important is that first body of knowledge that you get at university? Or are we more interested, I mean, we talk about this a lot, don't we, but you're developing the skills of acquiring and constructing knowledge rather than storing it. A frame of reference to, to test whether new knowledge is relevant to you or whether it's not yeah. true. Yeah. And I, and I must confess, I wouldn't be happy with a doctor or a dentist working on me with having, having no knowledge and consulting chat GPT live. This patient says so. But, but nevertheless, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's worth thinking about just how much would they actually have to know in order to begin practice. Nursing, I mean, lots, lots of areas. Mm -hmm. um, mm. GPs in Australia do that a lot. Right. And you tell them your problem, and then they say, oh, You still have GPs. Oh, no. excellent. Yeah. You don't. No, not here anymore. You can't get to see doctors here. Anyway, let me not just. I think if you're poor, you're supposed to die because that saves the state some money. Yeah. I think you one mustn't also underestimate the AI. We're going to wrap it up in two minutes. Yeah, but, 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 but.
and the, the universities themselves have become this like the, and the tiered system tier, yes, yeah yeah and it's just, can we do something to break that somehow within this project yeah. is there a way of like almost like trying to get student mentors to reach other people well, this is about skills and also finance. And then we already had uh, a challenge when we met some students with laptops, so they didn't have access to the internet, they didn't have access to even now, like white spaces to work. And there's been some conversations all around the space for like, um, but yeah, how do we, and that's at a local level, we can talk about that. So we can about that. But how do we know what's there? Yeah. Challenges are, and there is so much. Yes, there are students kind of conversation around, and, and you must find it, I guess. Um, I, I don't know, yes, uh, but in your work, but this is kind of we're talking about, and how they the expectations that they come and they are tech savvy and they know exactly what to do, they plug them in and they're away. And a lot of them have used pen and paper, never even like look at and I'm just so fed up with it because, yeah. because of the pandemic. Yeah, I, we, I ran a workshop a couple of weeks ago, and one of we asked for feedback at the end because it's a pilot. And one of the um participants who was perhaps in speaker audience had said, I would have much preferred it if we'd have been working collaboratively on my or something. So Maybe yeah, we've done Miro in yeah. our group. And um, the person that was working with asked, we had lots of graduates and interns in the room and asked them to put their hands up if they'd have liked that. And, none of them mm -hmm. and then they said, Do you prefer paper and the wall? Um, sorry to interrupt because I feel you're on a bit of a roll here. There's a good flow, there's lots of energy. We're going to have to pull it together now. Um, do you mind if I ask you just to report back on where you've got to? We weren't expecting you to have solved the, the planet's <laughs> problems, but it'd be interesting to know where you are and what you think of the process. Okay. We're going to have to, yeah. sorry to, yeah. to interrupt because yeah. you've got a bit of a flow going there, which is which is good. Um, I'm just yeah. going to ask you to and the other thing briefly is, on uh, again, you've got to not understanding that. Eye, but I wonder 30, to what 30, extent 25 minutes you, you can't know, do what we are four and a half to five hours is expected increasingly to take. And, and anyway you're supposed to be working with people from your own institutions mix so it's, by, it's a much harder um, challenge and then diluting where you've got to what by moving from place? one bad summary to a worse summary to a worse summary to a worse mm -hmm. summary of knowledge and how we're going to create and have the new knowledge uh, sorry to interrupt but we'll have to pull it yeah. together now um yeah. We can't do in 25 minutes what's supposed to take four and a half to five hours, but we're interested to hear back from you. We'll ask a table just to report back very briefly on where you've got to and what you think of the process. Okay. Nice talk. Right, everybody. Um, as I've already pointed out, th this exercise is, uh, according to the, the foresight tools, government site, supposed to take four and a half to five hours. Uh, you've had roughly 25 minutes. Um, so we're not expecting finely crafted, comprehensive solutions. It's a start, okay? And we're interested, if we could start with this table, just, just to hear where, you, where you've where got to in this process and what you think of it. Don't be shy. Yeah. Um, but we, we start to think about where our experience, where and how our in institutions or organizations. With, oh, sorry. <laughs> we, we started looking at how our institutions or organizations were already doing stuff, um, small steps, small things. And we talked about the impact we have at a local level. And by making ch small changes at a local level, it can all join up. Um, more um, at a national or international level and we we talked through some cases and examples of that and we also discussed the role of students in that process and um we just briefly said about ownership giving them ownership sometimes i think i don't know what students i can guess what their problems are but they they know their problems my guesses are sometimes very wrong um and so it's just thinking about how we embed that student voice and give them opportunity um and work with colleagues from across the uk the world um what twinning um with institutions um 
but just taking small steps um, with local environment, um, working with different uh, industries that are locally um, and embedding approaches with colleagues in a new world where new skills will be needed. And um, yeah, is there anything I miss? Right. Ukraine. <laughs> we spoke a lot about Ukraine and how um, an example is that we're working with leaders, some leaders in education over in Ukraine are coming over next week to share where they're at and we're sharing where we're at and it's mutual learning opportunity because they're undertaking massive transformation and um, so this two-way conversation and how small conversations with certain colleagues um, can make massive impact within our own individual practice and then more collectively at an institutional level. Okay, super. Thank you very much. So small steps, working locally, specific concrete examples like Ukraine, like local industry. Yeah, that's how this stuff works. So um, very early days, but I, I had a sense of a lot of energy from this table and that, that you're, you're actually getting somewhere. So well done, amazing in the time. Who's going to speak? Richard. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we got we were doing last chance saloon as well, so we were getting good. We got a little obsessed with energy, so we kind of went down that to, to a large, large degree. Uh, I mean, one thing was that the, the AI tool used ChatGPT. We were arguing for a local version of that, and just thinking, you know, can we work with someone like Jisk to provide basically as another service their own AI tool that's using our own data and then providing it back to us? So that would massively reduce the, the our reliance, and because we know they're a massive environmental hog. Um, we talked about sourcing alternative. You know, we've got the we've got the roofs, we've got the solar. We've potentially got the underground to go down to geothermal. You know, reduce our over reliance on on other energy sources and try and just look back at how we use energy and think: Can we capture? Can we use more batteries? Can we balance out the energy flow rather than just treating energy as a constant, always on uh, kind of service? Uh, we we had some odd ideas about one message per day per person, which was basically more about limiting limiting access to the internet. Well, we're just so used to having internet constantly on and constantly sending messages all the time. You know, what if the internet wasn't on for like they can only on for a couple of hours or something? I don't know. Would that how much would that change the Christmas bit, man? Um, and then one other thing we talked about EN displays and just the fact we're sitting here with all these projectors churning out heat and do we really need all these things? You know, we were with this remarkable tablets they were advertising upstairs and, and it's a great innovation because they only use energy when they do change the display. So why can't we move more in that, in that direction? And, uh, you know, because how many displays have we all, <laughs> we usually always have two on at any moment in time. So I think that's good. Let's say we've got a level one track mind with energy. Really. But, but that's good because you've got focus. Sorry, Karen, did you want to add to that? Um, um, well, also uh, looking at um, having a great distribution of sources of energy. Um, so, uh, you know, kind of like if you get bombed or if you have a hurricane and solar panels are ripped off roofs or power stations are disrupted, then if you've got other entities kind of plugged into the grid that are feeding power, then the whole thing doesn't have to go it's up okay thank so, you so again big problems but but small and tangible specific things that could be done to improve the situation right last of all but not least i'm sure we chose the wishful thinking we felt that we needed some positivity um but we started out discussing um context differences which were interesting because you're from australia i'm from belgium we felt that the, the the high pressure that maybe exists in the UK on universities is different in our context. And so we came from a different starting point and had a, had some we needed some time and some clients by by you to get a focus on on what actually were we trying to think about, what actually were we trying to establish with these scenarios. And we didn't get to any intervention. We had a very interesting conversation about all the aspects that would might be interesting in the future. Um, so in that sense, it enlightened me, but we didn't come up with anything, you know, useful for anyone else, I think. It, it would have been almost a miracle if you had in the time available and under the conditions we're working. But but I think conversation's an interesting notion, isn't it? That's what we're doing. We're starting a conversation. And what we what we are hoping that one or more of you might want to take this further 
we're interested in having a conversation between us in the University of London and other institutions. We, we would very much like to see a project happening that we could work with to actually try and implement these ideas in an institution or, or, or more. Matthias. Uh, I don't think I understand the implications of that question. So how about the answer is maybe? How about we talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, how about? Yeah, that'd we be lovely. We'll do. Okay, right. Okay, um, we've eaten into your lunchtime. Sorry about that. Thank you very much for your participation. I hope you found it useful. I think you found it enjoyable, but I hope it's useful as well.